have in a second year, and then we'll take care of everything. So hello, sure. How are you, sure? Hello, I'm glad you're sure. I'm glad you. I'm glad you. Into the weather physically today, but um, you know, I'm. Oh. I'm oh no, it's okay. It's it's the heat. Ah. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. It's a lot of heat. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, I'm just waiting for it to load up, and then we'll go live in a second. Yeah. And then we're going to read Bina's poem. We'll start off with this, and we'll see how we can connect it to, uh, later. Yeah, but just, I'll hang, just, oh, just, to share, just to share with you that um, it is because uh, we were discussing something, uh, me, Janet, and Sil, we were discussing about that awareness. Sometimes awareness just happened, and, uh, and I shared uh, an old story, and then she, uh, Janet actually brings some other points, and she says that, okay, uh, people who have not so protected and not so abundant kind of uh, childhood they have they know they they become aware organically of where they will go and what they will do so that that awareness part which is like becomes innate with their circumstances so that was something we were discussing and that it reminds me of this poem which i wrote about uh, because i saw some children and and you can feel by their their by their way of being by their especially from their eyes yes. they are aware oh. of things way ahead yes mm. way before when they really need to oh. be oh. <laughs> so right that's sorry say it again oh i said absolutely i've seen that yes. a lot yes yes uh, I, I i understand that so that was, it was not oh. fun to write this poem, but okay, yeah. Yes, <laughs> I'll, I'll be there in one second. Let me just do one more share of yes. these things here and then we'll come. Uh, and also it just gives gives others a chance to join. I, I'm keen for them to hear this because this is a, it's a powerful poem. I do remember this. Uh, I do remember this. I'm very and powerful. And you wrote this poem in conjunction with the short story. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. mm. Mm, yes mm, mm, mm. okay so there's some history of uh, being uh, saw this uh urchin it's the best way to describe it it's not not in a derogatory sense but a street urchin essentially or you know, looked like it but she was wearing this really fancy pair of shoes uh which you know who knows and uh, like a lady's pair of shoes i mean it's a girl uh, you know young girl um, and and so she was walking down the street, paying attention to these shoes and delighting and enjoying the shoes and everything. And I wrote this magical story about it. And then this poem has come out of it. All right, uh, Bina, are you are you screen sharing still? Yes, yes, I'm sure okay. you can read. Okay, okay. So, uh, uh, sure. Do you see the poem? I just want to check. Yes, I do. Okay, okay. okay. All right. A uh, poem by Bina said, Blessed by death, we are the ones, receivers of forbidden. Palpables of survival, life revealed itself. Awareness kissed foreheads, innocence hiding in penury. Our eyes were widened, heart tattooed, our souls baptized. We are ahead, far ahead. Wow. Bina. Wow. Yes. Yeah. 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 That yeah. you you yeah. you really you expressed exactly in your poem exactly what I tried to describe to you. Ah. Yeah. Well, 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 uh, Bina, did you see the edit there? Will you just edit in real quick while we're here? Huh? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then I'm I'm keen uh, for uh, our eyes were widened. Yeah, that's the only one. And then and then I'm keen for for Janet to read it, please, if you don't mind. Oh, Edie. Oh, e Edie Bina, Edie, Edie. Oh, oh, sorry. Let me see. Where do I get that? Okay, yes, right here. Yeah. So widened. You have to put a D E there now. Yes. Why didn't there you go? E e e yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh I noticed so just, that you e don't have any punctuation in there, Bina. Right. So when right. I read it, I won't okay. I will try not to pause without purpose. 
Right. Okay. Exactly. Okay, here goes. Blessed by dearth, we are the ones receivers of forbidden palpables of survival. Life revealed itself. Awareness kissed foreheads, innocence hiding in penury. Our eyes were widened, heart tattooed. Our souls baptized, we are ahead, far ahead. I don't think Amazing. that was doing it justice. Oh, no, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. When, when, when wonderful. Sir was reading it, when you were reading it, it gives me goosebumps all the time because yeah, uh, this is yeah, something yeah. very close yeah. to my heart. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I can, I don't know how, yeah. but I cannot say that exactly. But I can feel yeah. the pain of children uh, yeah. who, who have that. And also that the positive side of it, because they are aware. Oh, yeah. They are really yeah. far ahead yeah. of us. The hope who are just so protected. Is yeah. still there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. You uh, can uh, see the determination that 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 uh, in her eyes, that picture is really haunting <laughs> in the beginning. No. But then no. when I no. when I connect with that, I see that. Okay, yes. They are not very cute kids. You know mm. that. Okay. Oh no. yeah. You don't like them as, as kids, like, oh yeah, think okay, it's it's a different one. You can see no. in her lip, you can see in her no. chin no. and jawline no. and her eyebrows. Yes, I no. yeah. also I, I have a big question for sure. Yes. Is this is this a picture of young sure? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. At some point, that look was in Shur's eyes too. That set in Shur's mouth too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, yeah. It, um, it's beyond moving. It is. It is. It is. It's. It's very emoting. Yes, makes me very emotional too. Like Bina said, it's a very emotional poem. It's not the prettiest of poems, but it's potent. And to tie into our greater theme that we were talking about, uh, right, sure, uh, I shared some of that, what we were saying, you know, just to carry on on the theme, uh, contextual appropriateness, but in the sense of understanding and that we have to understand more than just what we see. We have to look below, we have to look beyond, we have to look past, we have to look into the future, into the bigger context. And same in this case, right? Not yes, assume. that uh, and I, not assume. Exactly, exactly. Yes, we see the pain here, we see the uh, the awareness of awful truth on this face. But when I look at her now, I, I see joy in your eyes every single time, always, even even in the, the, the times when it's the worst, I always see that underlying joy. I don't yes. see it in this girl. No. You you can see, but 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 what I what I am actually seeing and feeling from from the picture and also from many child. Okay, I I know that. Okay, many other. Mm. Um, there is always a very deep deep yeah. uh, uh, longing. I don't know for for life. They yes. are really, really yes. deeply deeply yes. into that. Because for yes. me, if just imagining that thing is like, okay, oh my God, what's 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 left in life? Okay, it's it's yeah. hopeless. It's so, but they have this strength. You can see the spark in her eyes. Yeah, it's, no it's there. What, it's there. But, yeah, it's not it's showing there. right now, but it's there. Mm. Yes, no, but that look is that... connection. It's a longing exactly. for connection. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Needed, it it, it, it reveals that. <laughs> Yeah, needed, loved, um, understood. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. But yeah. when I heard your your um, story, Bina, at first, yes. yes, I could imagine this child <clears throat> in her life, in her moment when she was walking, when she was so yeah. transported in her mind, she didn't hear the horns honking or see yes. anyone looking at her she was totally and absolutely present in the moment of mm. her her perhaps her dreams or her enjoyment or whatever it was her focus 
was entirely in the moment. Yes. Um, um, and that, uh, that is something completely um, aside from her life situation, whatever that may exactly. have been. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And yeah. so by that, I learned, you know, that this possibility, this spaciousness, you could say, could open up for her. And, mm. and that I would hope she would have that all her life. I bet she will. Yeah. She will have that. And that is yeah. how people survive. Yeah. The yes. powerful, yeah. as you yeah. called it. Yes. Penuary. Yeah. yeah. Very powerful. Yeah. Abina, will you please copy the poem into comments? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, they also survive with love and connection and all that stuff that she exactly, exactly, exactly. And and you know the the triumph of spirit that you know that that to to get yeah. to that point where where you are connected to joy and love and goodness and particularly mourners because there is this deep need for mourners. Uh, it, it doesn't need circumstance. It's something that comes from within, right, sir? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. it's very powerful. Very powerful. See very this powerful. Look right. and see and, frequently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's useful to remember and keep in mind. Yeah. That you know, when you feel sorry, uh, this is you know, I I am reminded by by people like you, sure, and you know, I I know many others that have that have histories that aren't pleasant. Uh, through sheer acts of will, like you, yeah, they get to where they want to be. Yes, they don't give up. They don't give up. That's the lesson. That's the lesson. Don't ever give up, right? Right. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Never <laughs> give up. No Never to. give up. Never the give up. The trauma is horrible, Never. but then afterwards, if you choose to, if you choose to live differently, choose differently, yeah. make better, different, yeah. everything can change. Yeah, yeah. It, it's super powerful. It, it is super, super, super powerful. It's a very magical thing. It's a very magical thing. It's very beautiful. So you you copied the poem. So I want to say hello, Norma. Hello, Norma. I just want to say hello to everybody. Um, you know, uh, yeah, it's important. It's important. Good morning, good morning, all of you. It's too wonderful that you're here. Hello, Ramsey. Hello, Ramsey. Uh, too, too cool. So yeah, children did not learn to wear masks or not yet. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, we are the ones uh, that's been this magical poem. Yeah. Okay, so Ramsey, today Ramsey actually says, hello, hello, Ramsey Nacha. <laughs> it, 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 you, stole, you stole my thunder, Ramsey, you stole my thunder. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ramsey awesome. Nacha. Yeah. <laughs> Ramsey, Ramsey Nacha. Yes, yes. It, it is a name that lends itself to be pronounced. Yes, and announced. Yes, it is a magical name. It's a very potent magical name. So I love that you put the poem in there. So, oh, there's Norma. Hello, Norma. Hello, hello, hello. I did say hello, but I'm uh, saying hello okay. again. So uh, I, I, I don't feel that, that this is uh, always uh, the case, that children don't know how to wear the mask. They do know. Some do, correct. I agree. I agree. Uh, I, do. I don't think that there is such a thing as children as a box. And no. this, yes. I, this all... I know for a fact. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I was never a child, as you've reminded me so many times. And yes. you weren't a typical child either. And knew, neither were you, sure. And I don't no. know, Janet, I'm assuming that from what you said to me, you were also not a typical child. No, she was also not. No. Exactly. No, she was also so. not. Uh, but... but uh, Okay, I, I don't want to go into this intense kind of discussion, but there is something I want to say. Why that, not? Uh, that people uh, people assume that, okay, children are like, okay, they are open, they will say that. Uh, they, say, they will say everything. They don't do that. No. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a wrong assumption about children that they will yeah. say. They do understand yeah. even what people are not saying in words. They do understand their intent. Yeah. And they, yeah. they know that what's the danger is coming after that. Yeah. And yeah. also, also that the biggest crime against any any child we can ever commit is to say something and do something differently. 
it it is for the life it is going to be a struggle for them the these children who were being abused by by other people and they keep saying oh it's all right it's all nice oh it, it, it doesn't be. these type of things they say in words and the actions are completely different those children struggle with trust big time they don't know that okay where to and then they actually just completely most children i'm not saying about uh, everyone but some children actually disconnect from the reality that okay whatever is happening it's not there i need to just just remember the words what the words are saying and they get into the bmn things again and again and again in life and also uh, there are so many things i feel so terrible i'm getting so emotional about this but uh, wow. i can i can feel some of their their struggle when people are doing something else but just speaking the nice words those children who were so receptive in that age they struggled their whole life with this problem that way to understand and what to understand and what to really consider words or actions yeah yeah words or yeah. actions yeah in in yeah. in my my childhood it was not it was not like that but even even when i was able to understand people's intent and they were speaking king nicest with my parents like okay yeah okay but i know that they are not my parents friends okay they they are lying they are doing other stuff it was really really horrible for me and then and i choose to just focus on words there you go the choose the choose the yeah. choose yes. yeah 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 so i want to add something in here that i observed as a child i saw children get stupid i saw them yes. make themselves stupid now I, when i say stupid yeah i don't mean uh, that they didn't have the intellectual capability they did but they learned to shut it down through conforming they were sharp they were insightful they were aware but what they saw was essentially a society in, in particular where i'm thinking now surrounded by hypocrisy for instance and 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 that hypocrisy meant you know people are, are, are saying one thing doing another lying etc they didn't mean to it was yes. inadvertent oh hello elizabeth hello elizabeth hello 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 oh i'm glad you thank you for saying hello norma you reminded me there oh there is elizabeth up there good morning elizabeth good morning to you yes wonderful i'm thrilled here so so in that i saw the kids they were aware they were very very aware they were sharp they understood what's going on but because what they saw they could not express and they could not even be aware of it because if it showed in their eyes as ramzi said they would get into trouble yes because if, yes. if you showing in your eyes that well you know but parents teachers you all just lying all the time you all being false yes. and phony and uh, you can't show it so they learn to hide it and they hide yes. it so well that they forget that awareness and they stop being exactly. able to see it exactly. and that's a great tragedy that's a great tragedy okay it's a great tragedy yeah yeah and and and, and of course uh, they do get into into those uh, those activities like okay lying and saying something else or whatever yeah, uh, exactly. because this is what they have learned it's not exactly what they have learned exactly. this is what they have been yeah. Yeah. really people do communicate with children's subconscious mind they know yeah. that and and people yeah. are, and children are so receptive towards uh, this thing and and once they have learned it once this thing is just getting into your subconscious mind how you can get out of this in your life yeah yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. Really so so exactly so what i saw was kids seeing what is and what is uh, then they realized oh i can't show i can't be aware of what is now i have to learn to show and see and be aware and live in should and that's what yes. their change was they yes. all shifted from seeing what is to should uh -huh. and that that their entire lives changed right and the, the whole bubble the awareness everything they start becoming shooters shooting on everything and including themselves say again sir yeah. I was going to say that's a lot of the indoctrination that goes on in the American schools. What exactly. you're talking about exactly. there, they're told right. they should right. be, right. do, and act this way, live this way, because right. that's right. what. Right. 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 But we do. Right. Yeah, not just schools, but the parents, the culture, the right. TV, everything. everything. It's the right. paradigm. It's the superiority paradigm. 
Yes, I I just chose schools because kids yeah, are in yeah. eight hours a yeah. day. Right, exactly. And it's particularly pressed into them at school. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 And when I grew up, uh, the church was was the dominant factor, right? I mean, big mm -hmm. church in the middle of the town. You see the steeple. Everything revolves yeah. around the church. Everybody goes to church on Sundays. Uh, you even, you know, it's preached in the schools. It's like so. Uh, not only do you get it from the school, but then it gets reinforced in the church, right? Mm -hmm. Or the school reinforces what the church says. So yeah, this mm -hmm. should was um, thou shalt be obedient. That was the rule. Yeah, uh, and that's it. No, no nonconformity. You know, thou shalt not question the eleventh oh, commandment. Oh yes, and you you should I, not say anything about that too. Also, yeah. like oh, yeah. you could see question. that yesterday. Papa was lying. Yes. And yesterday, so that was the first time that I, I really, really learned that lesson of, but wait a minute, I, I, I do need to question and I do need to speak up. I do need to step up. Please tell so, the story. Please tell the story. Yes. Again. Oh, oh, it's a long story. <laughs> What's the matter? We have, we have lots of time. We have lots of time. It's an important um, story. It's an important story. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so, all right. So let's just put it into context here. The point okay. and purpose of telling the story is for ADU. Okay. Awareness, discernment, and understanding, and those three lead to application. And yesterday, you already understood and were aware and had discernment and about many things, but yesterday it came to application. Yes. Right? In, so in, the in, whole in, new in, nobility in, story is about application. So if we make this contextually appropriate, right, we are yeah. saying how we learn things, and at some point we need to apply. So let's hear, let's hear, we please apply them. Janet, well, your phone I, is popping on and off in the camera. I don't know if you want it on or not. Um, All right. All right, go, the, ahead, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, okay, so several, I was doing several things and se several errands, et cetera, and I'd already had a couple of anomalies present themselves. But one in particular that grabbed my attention was in the paint store. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I had to go into a paint store to pick up paint to take care of somebody else's job that they <laughs> did not so well um, in my own home. And so I'm in the paint store and I'm in line and I'm waiting to be served. And there were other men in the store, all with men. It's, it's a contractor store, right? So mm -hmm. I'm in there and I finally get up to the counter, but then these other men step up to the counter, three of them, um, and the cashier, the clerk, male also, he looks to me and he's like, well, you don't mind. Let me get these gentlemen out of here first and then I'll take care of you. And I said, no, I do mind. I had never <laughs> ever, ever in my life spoken up like that to anybody. I've always been so overly polite and said, oh yeah, it's okay, go ahead. No, yeah, it wasn't yeah. okay. Because I was exactly. already in that store for 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah and yeah. that was enough. Yeah. My time is valuable too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I simply said I wasn't mean. I wasn't nasty. I just said I do mind. <laughs> the the clerk, well, he conceded and and he went ahead and served me. Uh, he didn't have a choice. Um, but, you know, the other men said, "Pardon me, ma'am," and they stepped aside, took their stuff, you know, off the counter so that I could take care of my business. But it was um, that was a surprise to me that I even number one had the strength um i i was to that point of i'm tired of stepping aside for other people Wonderful. i've had to do it in my home i've had to do it all my life yeah. i'm not gonna say had to some choices yeah. were yeah. some situations were had to others were by choice others were because i didn't want to rock the boat others were because i wanted to stick with the shoulds so that i would be accepted exactly I always wanted to be accepted. And to yesterday, it didn't matter to me whether or not anybody liked me, accepted me, or even cared two hoots. <laughs> I had to serve myself. I had to make sure. And yes. the cool part is, is my grandson was standing right next to me, and he watched the whole interaction. At first, he said, Grandma, no, don't. You know, he always gives this, throws up this caution of, oh, Grandma, you know, please don't, don't make a scene or whatever, which I yeah. don't. But don't embarrass me. I'm a teenager. There you go. Exactly. But I did not embarrass him or myself. Yes, because you did it appropriately. Exactly. Yes. I chose that moment exactly. of, of stepping into exactly. appropriateness. 
And so when I described it to Syl, then he gave me that, that because at first I thought, felt bad about it. At first I thought, oh man, you know, I mean, so I sent him the message that, you know, I either need to learn how to be more patient or more tolerant. And what it came down to was, no, there is that point of appropriate intolerance. Say it again, please. Absolutely. Appropriate what? Appropriate intolerance. Appropriate in intolerance. Intolerance. Yes. We, Sometimes intolerance is appropriate. Go ahead. Yeah. And see, and that's, that goes beyond a boundary. Exactly. That wasn't, it, it sort of involves exactly. boundaries, but it goes beyond exactly. boundaries. It's above exactly. it. it. It's like that deep ownership of yourself of, no, yes. I'm claiming my ground. <laughs> and, yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, and it is to see that that we have to unhook from our defaults of assumption that says, well, it's always appropriate to be tolerant. No, it isn't. No, it's not. It's not. Yeah. That you can get kicked pretty hard if you're, you know, if you're being inappropriately tolerant. Exactly. Exactly. So, so what we want to learn is exactly what happened there in the zoomed out bigger picture. You applied a sophisticated understanding of saying, yes. well, you know, yes, I'm nice, I'm, I'm tolerant, I'm patient, and I'm kind and courteous and consider all this. But at the same time, I'm not going to have my niceness be abused. Yes. Right. Well, yeah. Which is that what that, he, the clock was doing, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, he sees yeah. this, you know, I, I'm not going to say frail, but he sees a short woman, white hair, older you know, we're sure that she's just going to nice understand. person. Yeah, yeah, no, she didn't understand. Yeah. Because <laughs> well, also, also, you know, he's going to pick up attitude from the guys. Well, hurry up, you're waiting. And now, well, so he's just making it easier for him by, by taking advantage of your niceness. No, sorry, okay. not happening. And, and, and yes, the key part of that story, I asked her, what did those men do? And what did they do? They stepped aside. They had no other choice but to step exactly. aside. Exactly. 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 And, and, I, and you know, from the vibe I got, they were like a little, not quite apologetic or sheepish, but there was an awareness that they had been also party to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they, yeah. In, in, well, when, when they say, you know, pardon me, ma'am, or, you know, we, sorry, ma'am, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Usually coming from men in this area, this part of the country, that's, that's a genuine, uh, we've just been schooled. Um, wow. <laughs> they don't like it right. it's uncomfortable right. but right. that wasn't right. my intent my intent was to nope. stand my ground and say exactly. no i waited exactly. my turn so, exactly exactly i'm a person just like you yes yeah. yes yeah there's no logic here you, there's no you know, logic here other than abuse of niceness and and the thing is you weren't you weren't like now this is the other part of the sophistication that i wanted to mention right since we we are uh, if we connect back to our center column, which is the new nobility sharing the story, the new nobility are particularly sophisticated, right? So, yes. so, so in the sophistication, they also understand that in this instance, you were entirely in the right to say, I do mind. Yes. Right. Uh, first point, first point of understanding, right? You were entirely uh, 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 in the right and appropriate to say, I do mind. This was yes. this was utterly appropriate. However, however, well, it's not really and truly a however, but uh, now the question becomes: How do you express "I do mind"? Politely, Simply, precisely, precisely with politeness and with courtesy, with, with impeccability. Exactly, because you you might, in a usual sense, right, from that from that clock and those contractors' point of view, from a superiority point of view, uh, superiority paradigm point of view, you they might say, well, you, in that very moment, if we could go inside their heads and ask them a question, and say, uh, do you think Sir is entitled to be irritated at this point, right, before you say, I do mind. Right. They would say, yeah, of course. I mean, it's like, wow, you know, if it was me, I, I'd be I'd be pissed or whatever. Right. They would say something like that. But from a new nobility point of view, we say no, just because I can make this argument that I'm entitled in inverted commas 
to be annoyed, bothered, irritated. It doesn't make it right or impeccable for me to be so, right? right? It may be right technically, but it's not impeccable. It's a poor use of energy. Why? Because now I'm going to add my, 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 my irritation is going to affect them. And all I'm going to get is more irritation, even though technically I'm justified. So right. it doesn't work that way, right? right? So with you being politely saying, well, actually, I do mind, right? And just being adamant, but in a very polite way, you brought in this capital A adamancy. Yes? That's it. It's that's very, it. And that's what we talked about. And I'm going to have adamancy to... adamancy is the key. Yeah. I'm going to have to step off for just a few. Okay. Um, okay. But I'll be back, okay? All right. So be adamant with what you need to step off for. Yes. I will. Thank you. Okay, just for <laughs> on Facebook, I uh, just want to say that uh, we had Sher and we had Janet also in the beginning. Uh, and mm -hmm. just now, just uh, a, a minute ago, Sher was sharing her story because Norma asked who is talking with us. So today oh. we have Sher and Sher was sharing the story. Before that, we had Janet too. And mm -hmm. Janet just loved this. Now, me and Sil, Sher will come back soon. Uh, she need to take care of something. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. please and, and continue. Janet had to go. Janet. Yes, Janet had also had to go. So now me and Sylvia here. Uh, yeah. Just before uh, you start and, and Cher will come, I just want to add something. This uh, this uh, intolerance. This is something mm. very interesting mm. for me because the first time I read this uh, this term. Well, not intolerance, but appropriate intolerance, you mean? Yes? Yeah, no, I read uh, the term lack oh, of oh. intolerance. And, oh, oh, and that was something really interesting for me because I was reading mm. in uh, an article in the newspaper and it was from a uh, former uh, foreign minister, I guess, uh, of US. And he oh. was giving a statement about Pakistan. And he says that this country's biggest issue is that it has lack of intolerance. Wow, of very cool. Intolerance. But I never heard uh, or read yeah. this term intolerance and yes. this is we yes. are super super uh, keen into this that they whatever the problem comes and they have the issue yeah. they just yeah. try to resolve it, it and right. lock it up and they throw the key in this right. ocean right this right is what right exactly like, um if you if you scratch yes exactly if you scratch an uh, uh, an 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 abused mindset mm -hmm. right not abuser, abused. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yes. Sure. Sure. Had in her early part of her life had tons of abuse. Yes. Because she had a lack of intolerance. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now again. Now again. It is. I want to qualify that. Yes, Mr. Foreign Minister, it is a very profound point, but you do need to add in appropriate. Because if you only say lack of intolerance, you also get the other problems where intolerance comes. And, and when you say lack of appropriate intolerance, now it shifts, right? The sophistication is lacking there. Because mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't understand the context, it's very easy to misunderstand. And you don't want to be saying, well, I want to get rid of you know, I want to now cultivate intolerance. No, I have no interest in cultivating intolerance, but I do want to cultivate appropriate intolerance. And if yes. I don't want to be abused and taken advantage of, I absolutely have to have this. Yes. And that's the issue with Pakistan. If the people are so nice and so cultured and so sophisticated and et cetera, et cetera, uh, that they just take whatever comes and they they don't have that appropriate intolerance. So very, 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 very uh, insightful comment and very powerful. So yes. the key is appropriate, right? It's like with Thank Buddha, the Four Noble Truths. It yes. is about appropriate desire or inappropriate desire is the problem, right? Inappropriate desire is the root of all evil, cause all your problems. Inappropriate desire. Very important to have that qualifier. Makes all the difference. Makes all exactly. the difference. Uh, exactly. And I, also one more point about uh, Sher's story, because I really want you to, to elaborate yeah, a bit more on please. Because what Sher says that, oh, they, they were just seeing, a, uh, watching a woman, short woman, old woman, and, and then they were, yeah. the assumption, first thing, assumption mm. from their, like, because they were just collecting the data and, okay, oh, exactly. it's all thinking. Exactly. Uh, old woman, they must be something. Like, oh, exactly. 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 They will not say anything. Exactly. Also, she but, starts she will begin to fight yeah, and all these. Things. Yeah. And yeah. The uh, thing uh, that they will, they were assuming that she will do anything 
outside her boundaries just to be liked and accepted. That right, is a, right, right, right. Well, well, there yeah. is one more point into that, which I yeah. want you to please elaborate because uh, we need to not only just be impeccable, but we have to show that we are impeccable. Also. That's the point I was I was wanting to share as you said that. So mm -hmm. Sher says they saw woman short. What they really saw was Sher's niceness. What yes. they saw was Sher's lack of appropriate intolerance. If yes. Sher had been a mean old granny, right? As you see sometimes that, ah, oh man, but, no, no, you go, you go, you go. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Let's get her out the way first because I don't want her standing behind me muttering and cursing and, and whatever, moaning and causing a fuss, right? So it's not the age, it's not the sex. It is the vibe that she put out. That niceness, which is the point here, the deeper point of sophistication, that from a new nobility point of view, yes, of course, they are making every effort to be nice and good, but they also understand appropriateness. So in certain circumstances, you have to show your niceness in a different way. And here we come to the key point, which is that adamance. So, right, uh, Vina? So it's, it's about the queuing. And when you come now, let I want you to elaborate on adamance and particularly when it came to Baba. Yes. Baba being Vina's father, who yes. now, now this is important to understand this. Vina is going to be talking about her father and you're going to say, wow, you know, you think he's alive. And Vina's father transitioned when she was five. Yes. But, but Baba was such a powerful force as an individual that Bina got to know Baba even though she didn't know him for very long right through yeah. people's stories they still talk about Baba even to this day right yes it's still it's still right. so 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 this is the but and 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 now we're going to go to this because Baba understood capital a adamance absolutely yes? And, 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 and well, well, how did it come up? Because I, you were saying something and, and I said to you, uh, you said, yeah, but he never, he never complained, he never moaned, but yet nobody ever went against him. Remember? I think that's what you said, right? And okay. I said, oh, it's because he had adamance. So anyway, you explain yes, about adamance in this context. This, this word and, and that, this, that concept, this concept. Really, this concept. And, and that was like really, it, it becomes like everything in place just because of having this understanding of this concept yeah, of yeah, yeah. One, one second one second see yeah. see see healthy okay. norma see taking all my vitamins and things vitamin d vitamin b and you know, heavens knows what else in there i already took two already see so just so you know i do take them i am being good i am being good okay <laughs> so uh the, before before we go because this is something very important because you said yes, that okay very. Saw my niceness this should should not be obvious or what actually he needs to be projected by her goodness not niceness that is something we need to pay attention by her appropriateness exactly not even exactly. goodness because uh, like i know wonderfully beautiful people who are good 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 all the time and people take advantage of them because they know goodness niceness goes together Yes. And yes. they know that they don't have any boundaries. Right. Uh, so and, and I'm speaking to some in in in. Yeah. With us now. Right. Um, yes. Who've had this. I mean, uh, uh, Ramsey short stories of this happening and, and Norma Elizabeth. Right. It's a it's a theme. It's a theme. So we need to take our goodness and we need to add to it. And this is precisely what the story is all about. Mourners, sophistication, yes. layeredness. So now we are yes. saying, ha. Huh, we're going to take our goodness and our niceness and we're going to add, yes, appropriateness, but in a particular point of appropriateness, the one that Baba so exuded. Yes? Yes. So, uh, so exuded. It, it all started with when I was sharing about that uh, he, my father, he was loved by uh, his mother-in-law, his uh, all-in-laws all his uh, families, extended families, friends, neighbors, and everyone, everyone loved him. And, and he was so, um, okay, now I, I will say that, okay, he was so adamant. But before I was saying, he was so outspoken, like he always say whatever he wants to and feel that. And mm -hmm. uh, like, okay, oh, if he had already eaten something, and if, if anyone in my culture it is really, really uh, difficult to say no to if someone is offering you food. 
especially mm. in laws or something. Mm. But my father never <laughs> took a bite. Like auntie with her cooking. <laughs> oh, never, ever. Once he said that, that, okay, no, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that, but I'm not going to eat. No one can convince him to eat. But it's still people love him. That, really? That's where the point came. That's where it came. That's where it came. Yes. It came from the eating. Yes. So Baba was the anomaly. He was the one yes. person who could say, no, thank you, to, to yes. being offered seconds. Yes. Why? And, and, and that was the behavior in, in every aspect of his life. Uh, and he was like always say things in a nice way, but no one can actually make him do anything what he don't want yeah. to. Yeah. And 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 but it's still, literally, my father was almost a celebrity because everybody really yeah. literally admire him. People do copy yeah. him. Yeah. They want yeah. to be like yeah. him. Still, my my uh, elder cousins and everyone they say that they talk about him like the way oh this is how he walks this is how he was dressing up this is how he and I'm trying to do even the smoking style I'm just saying that these are trivial no. things but why I'm saying no. that if you don't like anyone you will never you don't try and copy them right never imitation ever. is the sincerest form of flattery exactly exactly no. and, and that was really surprising for me and no. my, my no. siblings and my uh, elder brother he was saying that okay we right. try to be really nice with everyone, but yeah. nobody likes us yeah. the way they like but, Baba. Yeah, because yeah. Baba was not stubborn when he came to his things. He was adamant. And what's the yes. difference? Exactly. And we were not able to understand that difference. What's the difference? I'm asking you now, what is the difference? It, it's not about pushing my ideas. No, it's not about being awkward. The first thing, because when you are awkward, there you, you go. other people... That okay, there, there is go. something wrong. There is a stress. There, there you is go. Friction. There you go. There is a struggle. No. Right. He was so he in his mind, in his whole being, he was right. just sharing what is actually truth, the reality at that time. No, I will yes. not eat because I have already yes. eaten. Not about I'm yes. I'm trying yes. to like in a derogatory way, I'm trying to avoid your food. No, because I have already eaten. So sorry, no, I cannot do this. And also, he was very clear and uh, very uh, comfortable with his boundaries. So the, for me, the key is, because this is what I have so far learned from this, uh, the concept of adamance from cell also, it's to be comfortable with your Exactly, boundaries. exactly. And this comfort can only, now we have to be, again, layered sophistication. That yes. comfort can only be a thoroughly justified in other words impeccable comfort it's not like i'm comfortable you know like you get some people they they just obnoxious in the store and you know i don't know they're spitting on the ground or whatever and they're quite comfortable doing it right? oh yes or, or they're just being obnoxious they've been rude and loud and say well that's just who i am no that's not what we're talking about so this is a comfort that is a thought through to the very end exactly. comfort exactly. it is an impeccable comfort uh, so that's the difference between stubbornness and adamance stubbornness is an unjustifiable resistance moderation something that you're not comfortable with that you can't really justify and but you're insisting on it that's why stubborn has a negative connotation to it yes but adamance i'm being adamant why because i've thought about this and it's the right thing for me to do, and then just casually do it. I'm not just saying, well, it's right because I think it's right. It's right because of this and this and this and this. It's a very well thought through thing, right? And yeah. I also have at the same time, including this, I have the independence of being to, to be able to stand up for my adamants. Yes. Um, I'm not dependent on your opinion, yes? So yes. Uh, when it comes to me eating and not overeating, I am the only one who can possibly make this discernment. So, of course, I can be adamant about it. I know my body and the story. I'm the one who's feeling my gut, my stomach. I know how much is right for me. So you can insist all you like, but you can't change that fact. It's simply a fact, right? So it's very easy to be adamant about something like uh, extra helpings that you don't want, right? This is like the, but because Baba had the independence of being to not be intimidated, not be bullied, not be at the whim of opinion and um, making sure to please people. And 
he was also not vulnerable to, to displeasing people and being manipulated through that, right? Like your yeah. other auntie, the one that you said that everybody complains that they're making them extra lumpy and that, you know, it's like, <laughs> seriously, auntie, you know, your cooking is wonderful, but, you know, you don't need to do it by making us eat six helpings, yes? Yes. Uh, right? But nobody <laughs> wants to upset her because it's so important to her, right? Uh, but yes. uh, when you have independence of being, you, you can do this. And of course, Baba mm -hmm. had the layered awareness mm -hmm. in his saying no, was he only saying no to the extra helping? No. What else was he saying in that adamance? He was saying, I appreciate your offer. I am not being rude. I am not being unkind. I love you. I appreciate you. I respect you, but I also respect me. And I expect my respect for you to be returned. I'm giving you due respect and due respect back. Thank you very much, right? It's not a contract, but it's just, this mm -hmm. is the nature of things. If you are going to be upset at this, you're going to be so on your own. You're going to be in your own bubble of upsetness. It's not going to make any difference to me. I'm not going to hold it against you. If you are, it's just going to be a total ignorant waste of time. It's going to be foolish to do so. Now, all of this is in that adamance, right? But also the care and the respect for the person. It's in there, yes? So this is all implied. My point is that when Baba said no thank you, it wasn't a simple no thank you, correct? Yes, yes. Now I understand that, of course. Yeah, because yeah. what what uh, uh because mama actually like really really try hard to to give us maximum and then keep, by keep repeating and sharing all these things so we do have a lot of yeah, stories yeah. Uh, but uh you, it, it reminds me of that that in in his first job in his early days of his career uh, when he was doing some jobs uh he was being asked to like okay oh um uh, that <laughs> you are you are going uh, you are coming late. That was the thing. Yes. Okay. So you you always come late uh, because Baba used to go to college and then he was going there. So uh, and he says that okay, who, who was coming late, him or Mama? No, Baba. Baba actually was going to late, going late to his job. Oh and, wow, that's interesting. Yes, <laughs> and and of course the 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 his his boss was making and and then he once he said made a complaint and he says okay now you are coming late. Uh, so from now on, you are going to uh, note down the time when you are coming in. Okay, it was a private company, but it's still he mm -hmm. does that. And what Baba did, he said, okay, yes, I'm going to just uh, note my time of coming, but I will also note my time of going. Um, so he was the, the, the latest one, like, okay, no, not the latest one. He was the, how to say that? He was the last one always. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Out. Okay, yes. So because he he never leave his things unfinished, so yeah. that's why he, so he started mentioning that okay yes I'm coming late okay two hours but I'm going because late because I'm leaving late mm. yes leaving late also for four hours yeah. so then he says okay now uh, these rules actually don't apply to TA my father's name's initials were TA so he says oh no these rules are not applied because uh, he was getting in trouble because of it uh -huh. but he was so adamant about his things he didn't yeah. argue but, with him. But, but right, but when we say adamant, he wasn't obnoxious, he wasn't belligerent, he wasn't no. aggressive, he wasn't nasty. No. He was adamant in the way the new nobility would be adamant, which is simply to be pure. Okay, yes, okay. Now, yes, you made it more right. clear. He Thank was you. pure in what he was doing and he let it all be known. He didn't just touch on one aspect of it, right? Because when the boss said, oh, you're always coming late, he, he adamantly in this beautiful diplomatic adamancy uh, said, uh, you know, I'm coming late as well. I'm staying late and therefore I'm coming late. So, all right, the rules don't apply to me. Yes. And after that, the rules didn't apply to him. Yes. Yes. Because yes. he was in a different world. He was in a different world. So this is a very profound thing. Now, I want to ask, I want to ask um, Norma Elizabeth Ramsey. Yeah. I, yes. I want to ask about this point of adamancy. And I want to ask specifically, can you think of instances where had you been adamant in this way, right? This pureness, this pure adamancy, which has got impeccability and moreness and sophistication and diplomacy and everything in it, right? It is a beautiful thing. It's not a negative. It's a beautiful thing. When, when Baba was saying, no, thank you. It was a beautiful no, thank you. Correct? Yeah, that's why people loved him. So right. I guess 
right exactly <laughs> exactly I'm still exactly I'm, I, I'm i'm articulating it right but what i'm trying to say is i want to ask um, um ramsey and norma and elizabeth and whoever else is there now uh if you can think of instances where had you been adamant maybe not quite in the same way as baba because we have to learn to be that as bina says but had you been it would have saved you tremendous trouble where in other words you were you were inappropriately tolerant right we've got appropriate intolerance and we've got inappropriate tolerance yes, yes where you right. needed to be intolerant in others where you needed to be adamant and and if i'm asking this because i i, I very much suspect the answer is uh that that you all will have examples of saying, yeah, you know, I gave in too easy. I was kind of weak and I was wimpy and, you know, I, I was allowed myself to be bullied and pressured and so countless, on and so forth. I right? have countless stories. Exactly. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, so Ramsey, I want to come back to your comments and just read Norma's here. Norma says, uh, we were different children somehow, one to mother, one and totally different to father. Yes, we, we had different behaviors towards our mothers and fathers back in the day. Correct, correct. Yes, uh, maybe it's still so today, but I know back then it was very different uh, because, you know, typically then the mothers were at home all day and you had to deal with your mother all day, whereas your father, you saw them in the mornings and the evenings, maybe. Yeah, exactly. I typically never saw my father in the morning. He's already left to work and he came back fairly late too. Uh, despite him being a complete and utter knucklehead and a BMN, he was a very hard worker. Uh, not because he's actually got a good character, but because he's just very greedy. <laughs> he worked very hard because he's very greedy. It's amazing. Anyway, so I only saw him, well, at least that's when he was at home, you know, got divorced at age 10. So after that, he wasn't around. Uh, but that's it. Maybe saw him in the evening. And so just a very stiff and a formal thing, you know, and he was involved in the newspaper and that. Basically, he didn't have much time for the children. He wasn't very interested. And that suited them, well, at least me. It suited me fine. I don't know if the other kids felt that anything. Oh, it suited me fine. Yeah. Uh, we were too scared to be anything. Yes, exactly, Norma. Uh, you know, fathers were this figure out there that, you know, basically the only time you really interact with them when things went really wrong and it was terrible. Uh, so, yeah, so the fathers were, they weren't part of our lives, really. And in some cases, either the mothers weren't that much, you know. I mean, you, you basically did your own thing and the mothers would here and there interact with you. It's just amazing. Very different, not, different, not different. personally way. to me, but in my culture, I have seen that, that mostly uh, uh, women, actually, mothers, uh, they do create a figure like, oh, yeah. yes, okay, so whatever you are doing, yeah. all the nonsense, I'm yeah. going to tell your father when he will come exactly. back. Exactly, exactly. And then children become like really distant to that uh, exactly. to the father. That, oh, exactly. he's the, he exactly. the nasty person yeah. who, is who is going to come in the evening yeah. and then he's yeah. going to beat us or to scold us yeah. and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. most yeah. So, women do actually uh, yeah. uh, portray yeah. the father as yeah. someone who is mean or rude. Exactly. It's it's just a leverage for them to get out of trouble. It's it's a short term leverage which has a long term price and they don't realize it. It's them being kind of weak as it were and being non unimpeccable yes. really is what it is. Very poor usage of energy because yeah. you you yes, you're solving one problem but creating a bigger one. It's like come on, you know. Uh, Ramsey said earlier, with kids you should. I'm I'm not I'm, I don't care for this word should, but uh, with kids, it's useful or it's advisable or can be strategic, right? That's the way I prefer to say it. Uh, to act as, go on. I am a new noble, but don't test my nobility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good adamant. Yes, yeah. kids. And we, from the day, the, from the get go, have this tightness of being. Right. So you have to be exceedingly disciplined, in other words. So you 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 essentially never lie to your children. Essentially you never say I'm going to do something and you don't do it. You if you say I'm going to be there at, at nine o'clock, you're there at nine o'clock, right? In other words, when we act impeccably with kids and they come to understand that impeccability is simply the way it's done. 
right? And nothing other than impeccability will be tolerated. And you don't have to be intolerant about it. It's just when they're very little and they keep, you say no, and you do it again. No, and you do it again. No, and you do it again, right? And they, they learn, well, if, if I'm going to, you know, like let's say they're throwing their food out of the bowl, right? And then you, 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 you are there and you're standing next to the child and the moment that that hand wants to go out, you block the hand and no, and then they learn. So this understand then what is appropriate and what is inappropriate. If this is made very clear and there's no hypocrisy involved, the kids learn it very, very quickly, right? Now, watch, watch, watch how animals will, will raise their young, right? Right? If 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 the little kitty does or the the baby the kitten whatever the pup whatever uh, does something that's inappropriate bang down comes the claw and gets a smack right they do it again another smack they do it again another smack. That, that's it it's just uh, and the parent doesn't even think about it it's just like a reflex action really so they quickly learn from a conditioning point of view okay I can't do this right uh, but they need to know very clearly where the boundaries are now keep pushing those boundaries but you have to have that adamance as a parent to say when the boundaries are being pushed, no. And you need to know that your boundaries are firm. Yeah. If you give once, it's all game over. This is what many parents don't realize. Yeah. Mm. Once you, if you teach the kids that if you say no and then you relent on that, then what does your no mean after that? You've taught them that there is a loophole, there's an exception, and they will look for that exception forevermore. So you have to be 100%, not 99, 100. 99 is not good enough when it comes to adamants. Yeah? Make sense? Yes. And yes. if you do this in the beginning, once they learn that this is it, this is how it is, right or wrong, it doesn't matter. It's how it is. Then you have no problem. The kids don't even bother to test that after all because they know. And then when you give them the freedom to learn and grow, these are my boundaries. You can create your own boundaries, but you know, when you, yeah, this is what the reality is. And they're quite happy with it. As long as they have space to grow and learn and be that you don't have restrictive boundaries. You just have boundaries that are personally comfortable for you, right? That everybody can live in. So yeah. it's not that hard, but it requires impeccability. And particularly it when it comes to children, it requires it, it re a lot of skills. discipline, discipline. Discipline, but when we understand discipline in the context of adamance, that you cannot be adamant if you've made an exception. Now you're just a hypocrite. Wow. Yes? Yes. Okay, so this is what. Let me repeat I... that. Let me repeat that. Sorry, Bina. It's a very important point. You cannot be adamant if you've made an exception because that makes you a hypocrite. Oh, yes. Can't be adamant if you're a hypocrite. Uh, Baba was never, ever, ever, ever a hypocrite, correct? Oh, never. never, never. Not even once. No. And then exactly. that, that, that is why they don't need to, to yell. They don't need to scold. They, they don't need to like really uh, teach us anything. Uh, this is what I was, okay, later on uh, about Mama also. She is not like a conventional Pakistani mother. She never yells us. She never beat us, like uh, these type of things. And, and we were really trying to understand that how she was able to control us without doing anything. Exactly. Because my, my younger sister, she is having kids and then, okay, she is with this thing. And I was like, but how mama was doing that? Because it was not even a Respect. thought in our mind. Because... Respect. Because mama didn't treat you as children. Yes, or never. Yes. That was the key, see? And the moment you start treating children as children, they resent it, and then it's like now you've created a false personality. It's a limited thing. You assume they don't know. You assume they're limited, and all, it's a whole bunch of problems that come from that. Uh -huh. So don't treat them as children. Treat them as people. They're just people who don't know certain things yet. That's it, but they're people, right? They have the same sensibility as we do. They just don't have the information to always use that sensibility appropriately, right? So they just need data, right? But it's like a computer. You buy a new computer. Is your, is your new computer limited, uh, stupid? No, it just needs programs. It needs data yeah. to be able to operate. Same with kids. Uh, Bina, uh, will you read Norma's comment, please? And comment on it as well. Okay, so uh, Norma says, uh, the one you, you have read already, and she said, you just have to love. The rest comes naturally. Uh, yes. Question mark. Yes. Okay. Yes. Question but, marks. 
<laughs> but what's the problem with that? Yes, okay. It's it's the love is not enough. If we yes. assume that it is, but it is not. Correct. Exactly. It is not. Now, yes, it please. can be. It can be, but it has to be capital L love. And if you are going to love and the rest comes naturally, you have to love in all contexts. So if you're doing something that out of love, you have to be sure that it is a lifetime context of love. Yeah, right. So, so that mother that Bina was referencing earlier, that one that said, look, um, listen up, behave. If you don't behave, I'm going to tell your father and you're going to get in trouble your father gets home. The yeah. motivation behind that is love, is it not? The, the, the mother's trying to get the kids to behave. And why is she getting them to behave? Because she loves them. She wants good children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But her love is limited because it's lacking awareness. So she creates an awkward relationship with the father uh, yeah. later on and all this stuff, right? So she's not helping the kids there. So her love falls down there, but, but she was satisfying it in the little bubble context. And yes. this is the problem with love, little L love that we do things and we don't realize that they have longer term consequences. That's why I keep saying over and over again, it needs to be love with awareness. That's capital L love. Yes, capital L love is universal love. It takes all considerations into account. In other words, universal love says, this is good for you, but it might not be nice for you. Whereas little L love says, oh, this is not nice for you and I love you and I don't want unpleasantness and unhappiness for you. So, oh, all right, well, okay, never mind, dear. And then you get away with things that you shouldn't get away with. Things don't happen. You never learn. And that's it. See, so the universe will, will get you to do what's good for you before what's nice for you. Whereas people that are too focused on little L love, they put nice before good and like the, with the mother, right? She doesn't want to be, uh, she, she doesn't want to be not nice with the kids to scold them and, and be the bad mom or whatever. So she's just being nice. And then she causes a bigger problem. So yes, we just have to love, but capital L love. All contexts love, all contexts love, not just little yes. context, little bubble love, right? This is very key. It's absolutely yes. very key. And then the rest will come naturally, absolutely. When you when you think it through for to me, the end and you look at all context, it all falls into place. Yeah. Go ahead, Pina. Yeah, for me, it is like, okay, we have to build uh, the mutual trust and mutual respect and all will come, the rest will come naturally. Exactly. And that's what your mother had for you and yes. your other siblings. She respects respected you yes she respected your goodness she respected your sensibility what were your mama's two rules <laughs> yes i uh, treat treat everyone uh, especially your parents as human first treat everyone especially your parents as a human first yes now now look what she's look at the respect inherent in that Right. She's not saying treat me as some special being, as a God, love me and, and worship me, look up to me, fear me. God knows what. All right. All this other stuff that parents typically have. No, treat me as a person. By implication, I'm treating you as a person and I expect you to treat me as a person. Don't put me on a pedestal. Right. Yes. Very specifically, she said we make mistakes, too. Right. Yes. Right. She said, don't put me on a pedestal. Right. I mean, not in those words necessarily, but it was she's mentioned it specifically that right? you told me that she, she spelled it out. Right. All right? Yes. So this is but this is a profound respect. You are telling the child this is from young. You're telling the child to treat you as as a person, as adults, as other as a human being would treat people. Yes. Yes. Also That's that giving you a lot of credit. Oh, yes, exactly. Trust your own sensibility that your 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 parents exactly. also human. They can make exactly. uh, errors. They can uh, yeah. do mistakes and all these things. Yeah. So yeah. trust and of course practice your own sensibility also. Exactly. In other words, learn to be discerning. Learn yes. to be assessing. Learn to evaluate. Yes. Learn to think about things. Learn to pay attention. It's all in there, right? It's all in yes. there. But it's the respect, though. It's saying you can pay attention. You can learn. You can understand. You can discern. That can is implied. Yes. I, I mean, most, no most people would never say that to their children because they don't think the children are capable of treating them as people. Also that, okay, it, 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 it actually eliminates all the false expectations uh, from exactly. parents. Exactly. Exactly. 
And then you don't have this, and then you don't have this major disappointment when the bubble breaks and you're, oh, my my parents are just human. And then you basically stop caring, stop admiring, stop respecting. It's a a very traumatic time for many people. They they love their parents. They have this big euro worship of the parents and then the bubble breaks and they realize some, you see it in stories very often when something happens and they realize, oh, you know, that was the day I realized my parents were just people. And then, then all the magic went away. You never had that. Never, never. You never had that. Right. And you will never have it either. Exactly. Despite you now being able to see mama as a person. You still love yes. her and still admire her. Well, exactly. Of course. And respect right. her also. And respect her. Exactly. Now, now we're coming, Elizabeth. There's another profound rule. Right? Elizabeth is a mother too. Grown children like Norma. Right? Yeah. I okay, mean, Elizabeth other... looks. Is it, Elizabeth looks like she can be her own daughter, but yet she has daughters. It's quite oh, amazing. Oh yes, oh yes. Yeah, it's quite amazing. Uh, anyway, oh, uh, yeah. No, yeah. Norma is actually asking Elizabeth as a mother or as a you were a child. Okay. <laughs> Oh, let's hear Elizabeth. We're going to hold on. We just want to put before, well, while Elizabeth's typing, um, there's yeah. another. Um, um, Venus mom had two rules, the only two <laughs> ever, right? So that was rule number one. We're going to hear rule number two in the in the, in 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 a moment here now. I am okay, keen to that, hear this. Yeah. Okay. Not not exactly two, but okay. She has a, a few, but. Uh, but she, the key what ones. She yes yes so the, the, the key ones are uh this is the tricky one for us because oh, hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on i want to wait for elizabeth's response to norma first okay 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 yeah 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 i'm keen to hear too or should we just keep going elizabeth oh wait a bit Bina, did we get to the end of, of, of things yesterday? To the end of the of the chapter? No, it was tasks and exercises, and after that, some slides were. Oh, there were still some slides left? Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. There were All some slides. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, maybe Elizabeth can't type right now. All right. All right. We will we will put stress on, on, on Elizabeth. So, so uh, what, what was your mama's other major rule? I shouldn't say the only had two, but the <laughs> yes, major one, the, the key okay, one. The trick, so what, okay. what did she say? Repeat it verbatim. Uh, sorry, I just became available to type. What are the questions? So ah, Elizabeth ah, asked. Ah, so so uh, Norma asked Elizabeth, when you said, this is most helpful, thank you so much. Norma said, Elizabeth, as a mother or as you were as a child? In, in other words, what, what we are saying, is it helpful to you now or is it helpful if you think back to when you were a child or when you were a young mother, maybe? It's a very cool question. It's a very cool question. Yes. Or all three, maybe. You know, child, young mother and you know, current mother. Oh, yes. And also, I think that if I understand correctly, it was a while back, um, you, you're now more in, in regular contact with your parents also. So you're getting to reevaluate that relationship too, uh, as both. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's wonderful. I mean, this is, this is the best way. It, it, probably all four, right? As child, uh, young mother, present mother and also as current child right which you, you know you're not really in that child parent relationship and i and i do recommend by the way that once you become an adult uh, you know call your parents by their names change the relationship if you're always saying mommy and daddy all your life it, you you maintain a relationship unless you had a relationship like Venus, where your parents were people yeah, then, but other than that, you're always maintaining an artificial relationship and that's problematic. So, yes, I, 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 I suspected as much, um, Elizabeth. And, you know, it's, it, it, it is a, um, it, it is a great testament 
to your beauty of soul and beauty yes. of spirit yes. enormous as well that yes. despite all of the things that have happened to you yes. show as well exactly. that you are still beautiful people yes. Yes, you aren't resentful. You aren't mean. You aren't nasty. You know, you don't hate people. Uh, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. I mean, you know, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So say again, Bina. I was just saying that this is something really, really profound about you. Yeah. Like sure, like Janet, like Elizabeth, like yeah. Uh, yeah. Norma and everybody else. Yeah. Okay, being good in, in a protected, limited environment uh, where everything is good. It's, it's not that profound. Okay, it's still good. Exactly. But it's not that profound. But yeah. but coming out of that thing, like where things were not so pleasant, things were not good, things yeah. were not impeccable. And it's still, it's still not being resentful about, not being really negative about exactly. things. Exactly. This is so, so, so profound. And what an achievement. Exactly. What an achievement for you guys. Exactly. Really. And, and, and I think that, that I mentioned this to show. I would say that, you know, People who have such deep, good hearts, they don't trust themselves. They don't believe that they are good. Yes. Norma, yes, you know, you said something earlier to me today, right? Uh, I know you said I was being selfish. You weren't being selfish. You were just being unaware. But my point is that it's that doubt, that self-doubt. So I feel that all of you chose these lives to live. Why? Because it was to prove to yourself that at some point you were going to realize I am good and despite everything that's happened to me. That proves to you that you are good. It's not an idea. It's not a thought. It's not a belief. It's a proof. If you are not hateful and resentful and angry and nasty and bitter and ugly uh, 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 right now, right now, Right, despite all you went through, does this not prove that you are a good person? Yes. Uh, Without the doubt. Read Norma's comment. She's asking what is BMN and Elizabeth uh, uh, is a comment right. also. A, a, a BMN is manipulator narcissist. B for bullshit, M for manipulator, N for narcissist. Right. So not nice people, not nice people. Right. I mean, they, they lie all the time. They deceive all the time. They manipulate all the time and they're completely absorbed in their own bubble of narcissism. In other words, you can say another way of describing them are black hole personalities because you cannot love a black hole better. The more love you give to a black hole, it's energy. The black hole absorbs anything, takes it in. And whatever you put into a black hole makes it more of a black hole. Yeah. So you cannot love a black hole better. You just make it more of a black hole, no matter how much you love it. So it's very important to understand that this is what BMNs are. Doesn't matter what you do to them, they suck it all in and they take it and they abuse it and they make it worse, right? So a BMN and a black hole personality, it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you for typing it out. Thank you for typing it out, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth and, also and, made a comment before. And yes. she says, caused me to not speak. I believed my sacrifices and compromises would be accounted for in some way, someday. That is not the best use of my energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a very profound thing. And, and you know, uh, this, this idea that your compromises and your sacrifices, in other words, your inappropriate tolerance will yield some reward. It is a very, very, very clever, very artful, very skillful manipulation of your goodness by the BMNs. They push this idea all the time because, well, if you believe that all your sacrifice, in other words, your willingness to be abused is going to yield some reward for you later. Well, then they can just keep on abusing you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's Please genius. It it's genius. It's genius, yeah, right? So, so the BMNs, and this, is, this comes from the feudal culture, they push this understanding, this idea, this belief that your willingness to sacrifice, to endure, to compromise in the name of your goodness which really is, and to put it another way, your willingness to be abused is going to lead to some profound reward later is what allows and enables them to abuse you now. Of course, that later never comes, 
But that's why the religion developed this concept of the afterlife. What a marvelous way to say, well, suck it up, a good person, suck it up, a religious person, suck it up, somebody who's saying, I'm doing good because I'm going to get my reward later. No, all you're doing is you're making yourself available to be abused. You need to develop appropriate intolerance. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 So sure, you speak on this point. We're gonna get to we're gonna get to Mama's second point of of importance to our children in a second. Bina was telling us uh, mom's two two major rules. All right. Uh, no, no, you should have asked this, uh, Norma. No, absolutely, 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 absolutely. It's very important. It's very important in our context here. Uh, we ask anything, we discuss anything. Uh, and uh, Elizabeth isn't forced to re to respond. She could just say, you know, I'm not now, you know, I, I don't, or whatever. It doesn't even have to say anything. Just not respond, right? So, so it's all appropriate. Please, please, we 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 love, we love this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Ramsey was married to a BMN. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, a, a BMN squared, not just a BMN. A BMN squared, wow. unless you mean you wow. were married to two. Maybe, maybe Ramsey was married to two BMNs at the same time. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, uh, that could, could also be. be. Yeah. Who yeah. knows? Right. So Elizabeth says something very profound. Will you read it there, please, sir? Um, I'm on my phone. Uh, on the screen share. Oh, I'm not screen sharing. All right. I mean, we put up the screen share. Can you okay. see? Can you see a comment on the screen share, sir? Um. Well, hold on a second. It, it should show up in just a moment. But yeah, yeah. If not, then then Bina will read. But I, I'm just oh, keen for you to read. Now it is. Okay. okay. So there, the the slide comment? here. When I see, when I see. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. And you said this is oh, okay. When I see this adamance quality in others, I find it attractive but perplexing. I must practice it. Thank you for sharing, share, and Bina. Makes wonderful sense. Now Thank that you, really touches, yeah, It touches Thank my you. heart very profoundly. It squeezes my heart, what Elizabeth says. But there's that goodness, though. There's that I hear you. Capital H, I hear you. I'm pulling back and I'm going, somebody's saying I'm good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, but you know, it, it, what, what, what Elizabeth's saying, listen to the deep honesty here. Yes. I find it attractive. Yes. Not compelling, perplexing. not compelling, but attractive. Yes. But perplexing. So in other words, there's a want, but there's restrictions, there's limitations. I'm not quite there yet to be able to say, oh, yeah, duh. And in other words, that, that would be uh, attractive would be something that you're aiming at. Mm -hmm. right? It's not yet accepted. Right. Mm -hmm. But the, now the perplexing says, because I don't quite get it yet. I don't quite understand it yet. Yes, I must practice it. Exactly. That's capital P practice. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Absolutely. And practice it in little things. Practice it in little things. Practice adamance first with yourself. Absolutely. I I, def, I would stand behind that statement. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in little things, practice being adamant in the things that you yourself feel to say, I, I, I got to do this. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Oh, no, no, there's no yeah, but do it now. Do it now because later never comes. Yeah, 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 do yeah. it now. So just, just do it with yourself. Be adamant with yourself, right? And because you've got that little whiny child inside yourself, be adamant with the little whiny child. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 so uh, let's see. Norma says, Unsure sometimes differences UK and USA wordings. Yeah, no, no, please don't be unsure. In this in this environment here with us, Norma, you are free to say the most stupid and ridiculous and idiotic things you like. Okay. Uh -huh. You're free to say that. You're free to say that. Yeah. And 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 you know, I'll have volunteers here. If anybody wishes to volunteer and practice, you're more than welcome, right? To, to demonstrate this. I, I can't think of something offhand, otherwise I would say it. Huh? Yeah, aren't we doing this already? Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm right there with you, Bina. I've got a whole list of them. <laughs> I think Bina was just very cleverly poking the stick at me there. So you've been talking nonsense all this time, so what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly he says, No, I can't say foolish things. 
Very clever, very clever talk, very clever talk, Pina, very clever. Um, so no, don't be unsure. Please, again, feel free, feel free. And 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 yeah, uh, Elizabeth says thank you. It's good to explode. Wow. You know, I, at first, you... I assumed that you meant explore, but then as I read it, and I, I try to read the exact words, not what I think is there. No, explode is perfect. Explode, yes. It is good. It is good. I do, I do want to say something. I've noticed this commonality that, you know, everybody, not everybody, but we've got three comments, two comments, at least two people talking about how they've experienced their um, own BMNs in their life. It's my oh. belief that we all have at least one, that we all Correct. have at least one because oh. Oh. there, oh. I believe anyways, I mean, they're necessary, oh. they're a necessity. Yes. Yes. They're, they're what yes. helps us understand and balance and see yeah. the, who we want to be and who we don't. That's just my take. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, absolutely. And then also what Ramsey says there, uh, when I was teasing about the BMN squared, yes, uh, one with two personalities. There are levels of narcissism. And that's why when I wrote the book on the superiority paradigm and particularly to deal with BMNs mm -hmm. and BS, is why uh, this term came about, BMN rather than saying narcissist because there's all sorts of different kinds of narcissists and then you know, some some might manipulate and might not others aren't so and and the the bs part is in there because uh, of this is where it starts and this is the no. tool that they use so if you don't understand bs and how this works and what it's all about and and you know typically i will say bullshit not bs but i just do it out of consideration for bina uh, but it's very important to be able to differentiate between the two the reason most people say bs is because well bullshit is too ugly it's too uncomfortable and that's why they get away with it oh it's just bs it's just bs really just so so the seat is okay deliberate lying is okay isn't that what bs is how do you inadvertently bs yeah. you cannot you cannot inadvertently bs you know then you're just being ignorant which is a different thing you're not BSing. you're just saying stuff that you think is true but it's not true right and that's just ignorance it's just foolishness but uh or just ignorance not even foolishness necessarily but when you deliberately saying things that you know not to be true and you're saying it in a way that you don't want to get caught out, like which is what lying is, right? Now you are disguising your deliberate deception. There is a, an awareness to it. It's a knowledgeable thing. You are deliberately being deceitful. How is this okay? Oh, it's just BS. No, there's no just BS. It's an evil, it's a horrible thing. And when you take all of the bad stuff in the world and you say, where did it start? Where did it start? All started with BS in some way or another, right? Well, well, yeah. take abuse, take abuse in the in, in, in the domestic abuse, right? Where did that start? Misogyny. Is misogyny not the biggest load of BS under the sun? You know? Mm -hmm. Racism. How is racism not BS? Oh, one is superior yeah. and all this. It's total nonsense. Simply because, oh, let, let's assume technically, right, that some okay, so group, some you, race. Sir, okay, I need go ahead. Go. I need to oh, go for a few minutes and I'll right, be no back. Problem. No problem. All right, see you soon, Venus. See you soon. So let's just say technically that, that one group is, is superior to another. Does that mean all members are superior to the other? No, it doesn't mean that at all. So you try to claim I'm better. You're just trying to make out you better because you actually you're not. If you really were something special and superior, you wouldn't need to prove it. You'd just be okay with it, right? So it's all BS, all BS, right? It all starts with BS. It's a very powerful thing. So uh, uh, just on your comment of different levels of narcissism, that's why BMN, it's sort of a catch-all term for all of it the whole range, the whole spectrum, right? Yeah. And, 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 and there are many different types of BMs, BMNs, of course, and it's very good. And Elizabeth says, yes, sadly, right? That, you know, when we have parents, we tend to marry them because we need to learn the lessons, right? Uh, gave him three children, long time to escape and recover. Mm -hmm. However, Elizabeth, did you get magical children? I, 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 I right now, this very minute, I know of four women that just spring to mind right now that had BMN husbands, but magical children. Mm -hmm. It's it's a peculiar thing. It's a peculiar it thing. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And magical and, grandchildren. And, and magical grandchildren, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 expose and explore, but explode, it just it was a beautiful typo, Elizabeth. It was a wonderful typo. 
Yeah, I mean, we, 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 what are we exploding here? We're exploding our moreness. We're exploding our awareness. We're exploding our intent, right? We're exploding our discernment, our understanding, our application. And we're exploding freedom of expression. Yeah? Yeah. Very powerful. Very powerful. Very, very powerful. Uh, yeah, our people are can make you wonder how this world works. The best part in all that is the no contact. Yeah, yeah. So that's the that's the the the, the main key with BMNs. You know, like a black hole, you got to stay away from them. There's that event horizon, mm -hmm. and you can't cross that event horizon, and that's it. You know, you got you got to keep your distance. That's all there is to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We hope they go supernova at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so it's a powerful thing. It's a powerful understanding. It's a very powerful understanding. Uh, but you know, um, um, we we need to learn lessons now. Now, Elizabeth, Norma, right? Sure, mm -hmm. uh, Ramsey, uh, all of you, all of you, same pattern here, right? Um, um, uh, BMNs become a feature. Parents, uh, partners. Sometimes we even get them as children if we don't learn our lessons, right? Um, at least not in the way we want to. Think of things from your soul's point of view. Now, your soul doesn't just look at this life. Your soul is in all of eternity, right? So one lifetime to your soul is literally like a second to you. Yeah, it's like a blip. And like a second. Oh, I just had a life mm -hmm. there. I had another life there. Oh, wow. And dang, these lives are going really fast. Mm -hmm. Wow, dang it. Mm. Okay, now, now. Now, now, when your soul looks at the pattern of your lives, plural, yes? Now, a very important point, yes. So, so please stick with me, right? I really want to make this point. When your soul is looking at the entirety of the pattern of your lives, it's saying, uh, sure, seriously, come on now, right? You, you, you had century one and you were this obedient little wifey that got abused. And then century two and century three, it's like, holy moly, man, when are you going to learn this lesson? You're not learning it of your own accord, right? It's just repeating over and mm -hmm. over and over, right? You're getting abused over and over. You're getting taken advantage of over and over. Right. right? Uh, Norma, your soul says, Norma, same thing. You're not learning. You're too nice. You're too kind. You're too generous. And you're getting taken advantage of. You're getting abused and all the stuff. Elizabeth, same thing. You're so sweet and so nice, and you get you're not learning. You're not learning. Ramsey says, "Man, you know you you are too good, Ramsey." Same thing, right? You're getting taken advantage of. We gotta fix this. Your soul says. So, okay, I right. uh, I'd love people. I'd love all of you. I'd love. I'd love. Right, right, right. So, so now we're in the void. This is before your, before before this particular life. So we're having a soul meeting here and a soul gathering. What can we do to stop this idiotic pattern that you guys are just doing over and over again ad infinitum? Like you're not learning yet. We have to do something radical. We can't just give you a regular life because when you had a regular life, this stuff happened. Okay, 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 okay. Bright Spark. Ah, ah, okay, okay. Yes, Bright Spark, you over there. I, I, you got an idea. What are we going to do? We are going to deliberately put you in the worst possible situation, right, of yeah. these BMNs and abuse so that you learn the lesson that you forced to learn it yes ah yes I, I want to break this pattern yes i'm up for this i'm going for this yes sign me up sign me up sign me up so elizabeth norma sure ramsey me or bina all of us we signed up okay bina didn't but but we sign up for this right why because we say i want to learn to break this pattern and i need something radical to press my buttons I'm going to have parents that are BMNs. I'm going to marry a BMN. And well, hopefully I don't have children that are BMN. But right, if need be, that's so. So be it. Because I need to understand about BMNs. Why is it so important? Because it's not just understanding the BMNs, it's understanding the paradigm. I need to understand how they work, how they think, how they operate, so that I can unhook from the paradigm because the paradigm has me trapped for centuries and centuries, millennia yeah. of lives. Over and over and over, I'm repeating. I need to break three. I need to break free of this, yes? So when we think of it that way, we say, oh, now my life makes sense. Yes. Yes? A very powerful. It didn't before. It does now. It, it's a very powerful thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My story, who my children are, it's a beautiful, complicated thing. There is a great purpose to how and why it all happened so that I could be here now in the way I am now. Exactly, Elizabeth. And that's what I was just yeah. articulating. The yeah. great purpose is to break free from the paradigm. 
but sometimes because a paradigm is so, so, so devilishly uh, trapping that when you're in it, it's almost impossible to break free. So we need something extreme to break free from the paradigm. Yeah. Yes. Almost like and to become immortal. Almost like what? A castle maze. You know, like the garden ah, right. mazes. Oh, right. The mazes. Right, right. So the, the easiest way to get out of a maze is to walk on the walls of the maze. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You see the maze right away. Oh, no yeah. problem. Right? Okay. So uh, so uh, uh, Norma says, sorry, what did you say? I had to pop out to get some water. I was saying, Norma, that if we have, uh, like in before you came into this life now, let's just imagine, right? And you out there floating in the void, and 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 the the bureaucrat comes and knocks on your door there the bureaucrat from the from the office of of lives you know they they the ones who assign lives right so say well this is my job i've got to assign you a life uh, what kind of a life would you want and say well what are my choices say well you could have the same life you had which was pretty normal pretty boring and you know you were just typical and usual uh, I said, yeah, but you know what? I've been thinking, and I was been talking to a few of these other souls over here, uh, and they have the same problem. Say, you know, Ramsey's soul and Elizabeth's soul and Sher's soul and Soul's soul, and all of them are saying, but 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 you know what? We 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 kind of been paying attention because we've been chatting and comparing notes. We're saying we we're repeating the same stuff for for life after life after life after life, centuries, millennia. We're doing the same stuff. We're basically trapped in not understanding the superiority paradigm. So we just do the same superiority. Sometimes we're the BMN, sometimes we're the BMN, but you know, we're basically just part of this paradigm. We need something radical to break us out of the paradigm. Ah, the bureaucrat says, I got just a thing for you. I'm going to put you in, in families where the parents are BMNs. Then I'm going to have you marry BMNs. And, and you're going to have some horrible experiences, but this is going to force you to learn because your these are your choices. Either you're going to suffer or you're going to learn. Oh, okay. And see, now you have the lives that you have to pop you out of this pattern, this repeating pattern over and over again. Right? That's how your life makes sense. That's the purpose to your life. Right? Why you have those parents. Why you chose those parents. Why you chose those partners. Why you chose those children. Right? is to really force you to learn because you don't want to be spending another couple of millennia in this bubble of the superiority paradigm. Yeah, does that make sense? Correct. Elizabeth says, yes, I have made sense of it all now, but still need to learn tools for relationships and communication with others because avoiding others is not the solution. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is what wave impeccability is all about. And of course, the new nobility. Uh, because they aren't just in a bubble, right? They live out in the other world. They live where they can interact with everybody, where they do interact with each other. And of course, BMN seek them out because like I was saying yesterday, uh, I don't know if you were here yesterday, but I was saying yesterday that the BMNs are out there in your community where you live now. They might live just, you know, a couple of blocks away from you, right? You go to the supermarket, you see the new nobles walking around, at least in the agglomeration, right? Now, if you're a BMN, and you walking along with your family and you all huffy and puffy and bully and I'm the man and I'm the woman and you're in charge, you got to listen to me and blah, blah, blah. The moment that that new noble walks around with this entire alternative paradigm just all around them, what is the first thing the BMN does? Comparison. It's always better or worse, but there's no comparing to a new noble. They, 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 they're not in a sphere of comparison. Right? But of course, they're going to still try and compare. So what happens to that BNM? Immediately, they, they have to say, well, you know, this BMN is definitely not worse than me, so they must be better than me. But if they're better than me, then I'm below them and I'm not king of the pile. It's a problem for the BMN. In other words, they could become exposed. So out there in the thing, the BMNs are going to try and pull down and attack the, the new nobles, right? Because that's how they will try and establish their superiority. Uh, of course, it's not going to work, but they have to know how to deal with it. Otherwise, they will be attacked and pulled down. Yeah? So, okay. Okay, Elizabeth, I, I see you and love you and I'm pleased you come. And, and this is a topic that we're going to be talking on much. So don't worry if we don't resolve it today. 
because it's not something that's resolved in one conversation. This is a repeat, a repeat, a repeat over and over and over again. It's practice, 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 right? Every time we repeat, we're practicing, we're exploring, we're understanding, and we get to this deeper, deeper knowing that we can apply it. So lovely. You too, you too, Elizabeth. Have a wonderful, a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Norma. And I'll see you on Sunday. I'll see you on Sunday. I'll see you on Sunday. I love it. I love it. So this is powerful stuff. And Norma says, I'm okay now. That was a hundred years ago. And 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 yes, Norma's not joking. All right, close, but yeah. <laughs> I love I love that. You know what, Norma? I am so impressed at your longevity. It is fabulous to me because you know you 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 are so sprightly and energetic and enthusiastic and beautiful and loving. It's a it's a magical thing. Uh, I, and and the fact that you you have your childness in you, Norma. You know, after all this time, it's fantastic to me. It's truly beautiful. Now I know who I am and who is me. I am part of divine energy, alias God, Jesus, universe. Yes, you are. You are. You absolutely are. You are. You are. You carry that in your heart, in your soul, in your beauty. It's too magical. So, yes, have a brilliant weekend. Have a mourner's weekend, Elizabeth. Uh, it is a, It is, though, a good solution. Elizabeth interrupted, or, uh, though or through, I'm not sure. It made me feel a complete person. If someone trustworthy comes my way, she would be an addition. Yeah, and that's the key. See, you, when you are, on, when you don't have independence of being, you are utterly vulnerable to a, a BMN. Right? They, they, all that desperation, they come and they give that, they, they, they supply what you're so desperate for. Right, and they just give it to you, but it's a false thing, right? They get you hooked and addicted, and that's what they're after, right? By giving you your desperation, you're giving you your fixes. So until we develop independence of being, forget about being in a in a stable, happy, and and long-lasting relationship. Not possible. That's what you were saying the other day. People are looking for somebody to complete them. No, you need to be complete, and then you have an addition. This is ideal relationship. When both of you are, are incomplete, you simply have two incompletions that are coexisting and struggling and finding out how they can be. It doesn't work. You have conflict because you're both incomplete. At least two, it's, it's like two, you're taking two gears and you remove some of the little gears and now you're trying to get them to wheel together. What happens when those gears aren't there, right? Uh, you see, it, it, they can't hook. There's this gap here. It doesn't work. Yeah. So you need to have all the gears so that they can fit and turn smoothly. It may sort of turn still, but there's going to be grinding and gaps and stuttering and all this, right? It's it's not the most ideal analogy, but it makes the point. It is, uh, I'll read your comment, yeah. So we need to be complete, yes. We need to be complete, absolutely. And that's where this, this concept of independence of being, Ramsey, that I keep mentioning. That's what independence of being means. It means that my being is independent. It doesn't mean independent as in financially independent or that. No, independence of being. Yes, we, we are we are a community organism. So we need to work together from a you know economics point of view, um, or all the other things that make us interdependent on each other. But being interdependent in in the, in the usual sense. As as a as a community organism doesn't mean we don't have independence of being. It means that's just the appropriateness of the nature of the circumstance. But I'm not dependent on you for my emotional well-being. I'm not dependent on you for my psychological well-being, my spiritual well-being. I don't have to have you. I can have somebody else. You know, you, someone else, all the same, right? So this is where we have that freedom. And because I have this, I'm able to enjoy you fully. Because my enjoyment comes from enjoying you. And you know that my enjoyment comes from me enjoying you rather than me uh, liking and loving you because I need what you're supplying. How do you know your cat really loves you? Or they just see you as a supplier of food? You don't. Yeah? So it's a very powerful thing. I think that's why we have pets to remind us. To remind us not to be like that, yes, and to also pay attention to say where the people that are are they really with me because they really want to be with me or they are just with me for the rewards, yeah. <laughs> she roars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm talking, are you talking about your cat, Ramsey? 
Uh, it's interesting. Interesting. So again, you know, when we're in a relationship because of neediness, how do you know the love is real? You can't. Only when, when it's free love can you know the love is real. Yeah? So if you're needy, you, you are going to struggle to have happy relationships. Be aware of this. It's a very important thing. Very important thing. Very, very important thing. If you want to have true love, don't need it. Enjoy it. Want it, but don't need it. Yeah, it's a difficult thing. It's very difficult. I, I, I'm not saying it's easy. It is difficult. It's very difficult, but it's good to be aware of. It's very good to be aware of. Yeah, very good to be aware of. Uh, what is what is your cat's name, Ramsey? What is her name? Ah, uh, uh, Norma's cat is called Petal. The Sino. Wonderful, wonderful name. And, and and I do believe Petal loves Norma. Food or no food. You are aware. Yes, Norma, you are aware. You are, you are aware. Nothing is real until the result is positive. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Your, your, your cat's name is JJ. The Siamese cat too. Wow, wow. Oh, that's all right, sure. Uh, soon you'll have, a, you'll have a good phone. Soon you'll have a good phone. Uh, JJ, that's an interesting name for a cat, especially for a she. Yeah. And 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 Sher's dog is well, you know, I don't want to say it's your dog, right, Sher? It doesn't that the the the, the dog which uh, uh, cohabits the apartment with, all right? Who who shares Sher's home? Who share shares a home with, right? Uh, that that dog, that person, that entity, that the being is called Lou. Yeah, Petal tolerates me. <laughs> Petal loves you. Petal loves you. Petal loves you. Yeah, she does. She does. Well, and that and, and the fact that she tolerates you means she loves you. If she didn't love you, she wouldn't tolerate you. Right, Norma? I mean, you tolerate some of Petal's nonsense too, don't you? Oh, you have a husky as well. And what's the husky's name? And is the husky a she or a he? Yes, I know you have many horses too. Oh, horses are magical too. I, I, I love that you. I love that you have. Do you have chickens as well, um, Ramsey? And other animals on the farm? You know, like geese, maybe ducks. Uh, pigs, goats, sheep, cows. Lassie is a husky. Ah, so Lassie, I'm assuming, is a she then. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. And and she's not too hot there where you at? I know you get snow in winter, but still it gets warm in. You have chickens also. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. I'm coming to love with I'm, I'm coming to love with you. I'm coming to live with you. So I love where you are. Around 500 chickens or 500 horses. I'm assuming chickens. But if you have 500, you're farming with the chickens, correct? Wow. That's a lot of chickens. It, 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 it's a lot of chickens or a lot of horses, either way. Yeah, but I'm assuming it means the chickens. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Only 450 horses. Yeah, you farm with the chickens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Norma. Norma, very cheeky, you know. I, I, I just love Norma's cheeky humor. Just be careful. I'm just letting you all know. Norma can be very cheeky, but in a beautiful way. Yeah. In a very teasing way. Five horses. All right, 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 right. And what are their names? Since I'm asking all the names, I won't ask all the names of the chickens because I don't think you have names for all the chickens, but I would imagine all the horses have names. Yeah. And I just like to know. 
I, I, I would absolutely, if I could, uh, Ramsey, if the opportunity presents itself, I, I will most absolutely do that. And and was it um, 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 Bina as well and all this. So the time will come. The time will come. The time will come. Visit Norma in England there. And we'll go driving around the countryside. And we'll have driving Miss Daisy. All right. <laughs> yeah, that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Yes, yes, Norma is your lovely friend. Yes. So you see, that would be the way to do it, uh, Ramsey, is to make like a world tour. Right. So then I, let's say I start here and I go visit Sher and I, I, I collect Sher. And then I go from Sher and I collect Elizabeth and whoever else, right? Jessica, everybody. And just, just keep collecting, keep collecting. And then we go to England and then we, okay, we're all there. And then we go uh, to Pakistan and we, we pick up Bina and then we end up there. Yes. And we all, we yes. all visit the farm. Yes. Yes. You all, all, all are. All. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just love this. I just love this idea. So, so I asked Ramsey uh, uh, Bina, what the, we uh -huh. we found out the name of Ramsey's cat is JJ. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. A Siamese, maybe it's it's a Siamese twin, and JJ the one is Joan and the other one is Janet. I don't know, but he didn't. <laughs> I, I just me having fun. Anyway, <laughs> so it's a Siamese cat called JJ, a she. Then also uh, Ramsey has a dog, a husky called Lassie, right? And five horses, uh, which he huh. doesn't know the names of because his daughter named them French names. So, <laughs> yes, we'll see you. We'll see you, Ramsey. Absolutely. You know, uh, again, you know, uh, life is funny how it works out. You know, this would be a wonderful thing. It would be a most magical thing. Uh, so if possible, who knows, you know, but at the moment, we'll see. We never say no, um, but right today, not, but you never know. My cat is a <laughs> all narcissist. Cats are narcissist. Yes, all, all cats, cats are. are narcissist. Right. So, so Ramsey, I have theories about cats. Yes. So I, I think so for today, we, we, we're just going to have it's a fun day with other stories. I think I'm going to share the story about cats with you. Yeah, well, one of them, I, I have many stories of them. Well, not many, but I have a couple, a good couple. But I'm going to share one in particular, since you made that comment, just, just for a bit of fun. Yeah. So uh, let's go. I'm still keen to know at least one of those names, Ravi. You don't, you don't remember any of them? I love them and French names too. All right, here we go. Here we go. I found the story. I found the story. Wonderful. I like it when I find them quickly. I usually do, I should say. I usually do. All right, all right, all right. And let me screen share. And is is there other? You read the comments to me if there's any more comments I should pay attention to, Bina. Yes. So he uh, Ramsey actually respond uh, with the names. Ah, ah, brilliant. Oh, oh, so he does remember the names. Oh, very good. Okay, okay. I was just teasing you. So Brun, uh, so Brown, Black, Yellow, Luke, and June. Oh, interesting. Brun, Nej, Hero, Luke, and June. Fascinating. Fascinating. Wow. 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 How old was she? Uh, from the names, I'm guessing she wasn't very old when she when she named them. Like in still single digit age, I'm guessing. Yeah. When she named them. You know, th those are names like a young child would name, right, Bina? Yes. Just, just uh, again, you see, uh, 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 yes, I'm guessing. Be wrong. <laughs> exactly. But but see what I do here, I'm, I'm practicing a bit of sophistication, uh, Ramsey. I'm practicing discernment and I'm practicing extrapolation. Now, of course, I could be wrong, but it's a likelihood. It's a probability from yes, that. Yes, around Exactly. Six. Exactly. That was exactly the age that I thought. Right Now, of course, it's the more you do this, the more you get confirmation about your skills. I don't want to make such assertions based on no evidence of response. Right. So when I that's why I always ask. 
and I test my theories. So when you get it, you, you start to rely on your probability, but never forgetting it's a probability, right? It was a probability assessment. Likely, if I had to put money on it, I would say under 10 and nine or lower. And of those, you know, five, six, seven would have been the range that I would have pegged at that, right? Uh, so, and also, you know, that's a, an age where, you know, typically the girls that they have to name stuff and it's very hard to say no. Right? When they're teenagers, you can say no. When they're that age, forget about it. <laughs> right, Tramsey? You, no, you had no chance over there. <laughs> no. No, I love it. I, I love the idea of Ramsey as a parent, as a father. Yeah. All right, so uh, I'm going to read the story about cats, right? Cats and so, uh, so alien but normal behavior in cats. So it's, it's a conversation, right? Now, well, sort of. And it's a one-sided conversation. My theory is that aliens use domestic cats as spy vehicles, transferring an alien's consciousness into the cats. Here's a video that, that represents some of this. So I'm going to watch the video. But here's the thing. We tend to think of aliens as like way more sophisticated than us. And well, yes, one moment. Let me make this a little bigger. I think you might not be able to read along so easily, right, Bina? There we go, right? And well, yes, this civilization is yes, but not necessarily all the individuals. So like, let's assume we here on Earth had the technology to do this, to send our consciousness into, into animals on another planet, right? And to do this. And there was some alien planet we needed to study. And we needed millions of people to do this. Well, for a start, it wouldn't pay particularly well because it would be too expensive, obviously. And well, well, they are going to be that fair share of numbskulls and jerks and well, pretty much everyone you can int with, you interact with, like on Facebook, is going to be one of those inside the cats, right? Assuming we now going to send our consciousnesses to another planet, an alien planet, where they have cats, right? And the aliens in this case are kind of humanoid um, aliens, right? So, so now imagine this, right? Imagine this, that you're in charge of this job. Your job is to, is to hire and recruit people. And it's, this is a minimum wage job because you need millions of them, right? You're going to get everybody coming to apply to do this because you just need them to be an observer, really, right? So now when we see cats or the inner aliens react as in the videos i mean the, the video here is quite profound you, you've probably seen individual videos this is just a collection of all the weird things that cats do right uh, it's just unbelievable and when you see it all together so lol when we see cats or the in the aliens react as in the birds we see them for really being just regular people in strange situations and also in a situation where they get to be indulgent in charge lazy etc doesn't make cat behavior all that strange when we think of it in this way, does it? Think of your cat as having a minimum wage laborer or just a regular person, a volunteer of, of the whole range across them, could be a student, could be, you know, uh, older people, whatever, right? So when you take a, a, a random person on this world, somebody who would volunteer or sign up for this type of a job, you're going to get Look at that person inside your cat. Look at it in terms of the attitudes they're likely to add, and you're going to see, yeah, right? <laughs> uh, so that's interesting. Some ways. I just love how we would be if inside a cat's body with a job of just observe, observing. To go a little further with this uh, real uh, fantasy, <laughs> I'm starting to get into my angle, my story, but there's not a with this fantasy. I have this idea of making a whole big fuss court case out of this, where my task is to make the case that some domestic cats, even most, have some sort of non-cat consciousness in them. And well, I present the evidence, starting with your posts about Lima. Oh, I'm talking to, I'm talking to Erin Gay. She had this incredible cat called Lima, and she made many posts about it. Uh, the fence exhibits one through 7,239. So I'm teasing Erin Gay a little bit here uh, because she posted lots of these cat videos about Lima, right? Or cat posts about Lima. Uh, not that yours are conclusive. They are simply representatives of millions of other cat owners. Next, I'll present the videos. These are accompanied by expert psychologists providing the psychological framework. 
videos of this nature, and there are zillions of them, make up the next couple of thousand exhibits. The reason for the quantity is because when seen in isolation, even if frequently, we don't pick up on the pattern. Each time is just weird and odd. But when we see many, 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 we see them in the context of non-cat psychology. And in the context of non-cat psychology, we easily see the pattern and the underlying logic. We just have to get past the unbelievableness of it all. Then I bring in experts on cats' natural behavior. Huge difference. When you, when you actually contrast those weird videos and you take cats like, you know, out in nature and how they behave, there's a massive difference. Now it brings the whole thing home and highlights the non-catness of it all. But the key to me winning my case is reasonable doubt. No one can tell me no matter how preposterous the conclusion may seem when looking at the mass evidence like the videos and of course those stories of glimmer that there cannot be at least some reasonable doubt, uh, doubt that they might be aliens, right? No way, it all fits. Tell me of a more appropriate way of observing humans. Cats come and go as they please. They have the agility and dexterity to be ninjas, perfect spy bodies. And tell me that screaming during uh, isn't alien. Sorry, Bina. <laughs> You've heard cats, right? Tell me that isn't alien. Tell me that in alien. And with that, the defense rests for a slam dunk ruling in their favor. Court adjourned, judge is a cat owner. If I had too much money, I would seriously hire lawyers to seriously make a case of this just for the fun of it. Like under the civil liberty statutes where we make the case that cats cannot be treated like animals because blah, blah, blah. You have me on a roll, Aaron Lowell. This is what happens if you encouragement. Okay, so now I actually write this story out, right? So I just shared this. Uh, I was talking to Aaron in chat and things, and then this, this now actually becomes a story. Well, the prosecution on appeal brings up some good, good points. Like, why are these cats not more sensible? Why do they fall for silly tricks and do dumb things? And here they bring up your vid as their exhibition, saying, like if this was you, would you fall for this? A good point, I say. Yes, indeed. It seems that way. I glance meaningfully at the jury, especially jurors number three, six, nine, and 12, on whom I have espied cat hair. But... I glare at the prosecutor, even though she's cute. You have not taken the actual mechanism of transference and observation into account. It's not a simple matter, you know. Obviously. I get sympathetic nods from the jurors. Everyone knows alien technology can be complicated or is complicated. So how exactly does this work, you might ask? I stare accusingly at Miss Prosecutor, Miss Pross and deliver with heavy implication, as you should have asked. More nods. I project she's not doing her job. Mm, I project she's not doing her job. Me doing it for her shows how on the up and up I am. <laughs> I'm about to start with, well, but quickly nix that terrible habit. When is well not followed by BS? Well, never. <laughs> I laugh internally at my own joke. Careful not to show this. I don't want the jury to think I'm mocking or belittling the lovely prosecutor. No. Scolding her soberly is one thing. Denigration of any kind, a big no-no. As you well know, I begin drawing them in with a sumpt of queuing. Anything from anywhere alien has to travel a long, long way. The jury nods knowingly. Mm. Even they know this. Like, duh, of course, you know, things are far away, travel slowly. Now that I have confirmed their smarts, they're very clever, the jury, they won't want to disagree with me later for fear of disproving their own cleverness. A tactic I'll be using over and over again. I have learned from the cats. <laughs> Sending anything physical would not only be slow, but prohibitively expensive. I pause dramatically, signaling my conclusive point to follow. But consciousness, I heavily emphasize, has no weight at all. I put on my, it's so obvious, but only obvious to those who are not idiots face. Yeah. Thus, those alien observers send the consciousness. Yes, I know. This is all obvious, but uh, 
I sigh with innuendo. I am laying a foundation. Thousands of hours of watched courtroom drama by the jury backs me up. They know all about laying the foundation, right? They watch, they watch, <laughs> they watch Law and Order forever. Yeah? <laughs> but distance always leads to complications. Like when you're calling someone on the other side of the country. Yes, they say you can hear me anywhere, but really, I glance sympathetically at the jury. Is this ever really so? Before some of them nearly say no out loud, I say it for them. No, it's never quite the same over distance. The further out we go, the more things go funny. Mm. I'm coming to a big, big point. A subtle one, but big. Hooking my thumbs under my lapels of my court robe, I pace deliberately a few paces, not for long. I need to keep the thread connected. I stop, pause just a fraction, and spin a measured spin to face the jury. And gets diluted. I pronounce with every ounce of obvious import I can muster. Like this explains it all. I make as if I'm done, kind of moving to take my seat. Not too quick, though. Tick, tick, tick. Wait for it, wait for it. What do you mean diluted, the judge asks. Bingo. The jury isn't quite sure either, but they don't want to show they don't know, wanting to hold on being the in-the-know cool people. My apologies, Your Honor, I begin with earnest humility. Excuse my tardiness. I was just coming to that, gathering my thoughts, implying our important disease, but simple. The further out consciousness is sent, the more diluted it gets. Adding in a silent but very clear, simple, I'm rewarded with silent durs from the jury. The judge isn't oblivious to these. And not to lose command, she now has to agree. Ah, uh, yes, of course, she gruffly confirms. Carry on, carry on. Sending consciousness is a complicated process, Your Honor, as we can well imagine. To make matters worse, for the observations to make any sense at all for the decoding equipment on the other end, as it's all done digitally, this is delivered with that it's tank vandal stuff tone. I, I don't want to get into specifics, so I imply that if that if I had to, it would be excruciatingly boring. No one wants that. Because of this need to decode the consciousness that is being relayed digitally and the solution uh, and the dilution effect, a higher consciousness is needed. Otherwise, one presumes they could just tap into the catcher's consciousness directly, uh, or ours for that matter. I see the worries I had anticipated and quickly add, but it doesn't work like that. For the transmission to work, it requires a willing consciousness. That's key. I'm not knowing to cement the point. I allow the ah, uh, yes, of course, in the jury to settle in. You know, this is a longer story than I realized. So, uh, all right, not too long. I'll finish then. All right. Uh, to settle in, where was I? Uh, Ah, to sum up, I declare with some energy, startling all, but I have the attention. We have distance and thus dilution, consciousness that gets diluted, a willing consciousness needed for the observation decoding to work, and um, economics. Now I have them. What the hell does economics have to do with this? Now who is going to volunteer to have their consciousness stretched out halfway across the galaxy for free? Anyone? I could take some hell no from the jury. Me neither. But hey, if you paid me well enough and the gig was well, laying about getting fed and petted and pretty much having things your own way and doing nothing all day, well, kind of like being uh, so uh, uh, inebriated. All day and getting pain to be so. Pretty good work if you can get it. Knowing smiles of prideful guilt from the jury and a few others I shan't mention tips, those scales all the way to me. Miss Prosecutor all but throws up her hands in defeat. She'll take that job right about now. So you see, I conclude, that when those alien consciousnesses finally get here, they are much diluted. So what we see is like the core of the person. How would we be if we stripped away all our layers? I hold, walking to our table. I have evidence here of just exactly such behavior from some of us. I include everyone from judge to prosecutor and even the gallery in my meaningful survey. 
challenging anyone to be publicly shamed. No one wants to see the embarrassing Facebook live calamity shared in open, open court. No need, her honor saves everyone. Finish up. <laughs> Gladly, your honor. I say as if I'm now doing her a favor. I'm such a gentleman. So you see, I repeat deliberately, what we see in the cats are those alien consciousnesses reduced via dilution and distance to their basic essences. Thus, we see those tendencies of innate behavior come through, much like we behave when I leave off deliberately, wanting the judge to shut me off. The imagination is always more powerful than facts. Yes, yes, we get it all. The judge obliges, obliges as I take my seat. Does the prosecution have anything to add? Uh, no, no, your honor, your honor must be weeps, barely audible, her head so deeply buried in her arms. Poor dear, better luck next time. But she too, like the judge, is a cat owner. Her cat, a large ginger tom, likes to hang out in her bathroom. Law is simple, really. It's all about the implications. Maybe I'll ask her out. We can trade cat stories. In the end. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my story. <laughs> I know I enjoy it, but it's a silly story. So anyway, that's why cats are aliens. All right, Ramsey. All right, bye bye, Ramsey. Uh, Norma too. I uh, chased everybody away with my silly story. All right. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I think you heard it maybe before, right, Amina? Or did I put you to sleep too? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I never read the story out loud, though, I don't think. Yeah? Or did I? Oh. Did I? No, never. Oh. It was fun reading it out loud. It was fun reading it out loud. Yeah. Anyway. It's 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 a naughty story. It's a naughty story, right? The prosecutor is 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 a bit of a BMN, obviously, right? He's a, he's a bit <laughs> of a bit, bit of a scoundrel and a rogue, but he, but he makes for a fun he makes for a fun character, right? But he does make a good case, though. He does make a good case. <laughs> I I think though this would be uh, profoundly fun if if like I said, if I was a billionaire or won the lottery or something. I really would get the best lawyers to present this case because I think they would win. I really do think they would win. And you get like the, the animal welfare society and all this behind it and, you know, animal rights because they've already done this with octopi. Yes, in England, in Britain, they said they are now recognized as sentient beings. Right, so it started, it has started where they, you cannot treat them basically as an animal in England anymore, right? They have a different legal status. So it has started. So this is just taking that, you know, to the next step. Obviously, if you do this for cats, you know, well, the reason cats get exempted and not dogs now, right? So cats get special treatment because cats have the alien psychology in it. And it's the alien psychology that you're recognizing not the cats themselves, right? So so wild cats, for instance, right? Or not not domestic cats that have gone feral, but the ones that don't have any of them, they don't get the special treatment, just the domestic cats, right? And then you may even have criteria that, well, but all right, since you, it's hard to tell, you just lump them all in one category. So, you know, but I, I really do feel that the case would succeed. I mean, because you have that octopus precedent now, right? And, uh, you know, let's say dolphins are next and, you know, other elephants, obviously, stuff like that, right? Um, and then, yeah, it's going to come. It's going to come. You watch. It's going to come. It's going to come. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised that the you know, vegetarians, vegans, and all this, right? Uh, people against animal cruelty and all this, that they haven't, that they haven't really uh, seen this as a legal strategy uh to to end to end all um uh, meat production right in 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 britain now because the because the octopi are classified as sentient you can't just go and catch them and slaughter them it would be like doing the same to a person right so that's a way to end it and this will come uh, this this much it's an extrapolation i'm very comfortable in making at some point this is going to be all animals at least up to a certain point i don't think they'll succeed with insects because people are going to say too bad if i have to uh, murder a, a, a mosquito sorry i'm murdering you mosquito yeah um because it's like well if you declare war on me I, I feel quite entitled to shoot back yeah well so flies and and mosquitoes you know they cause me harm so it's like war 
Yeah. So very powerful, very powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, brilliant, 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 brilliant. Okay, so, so all right. thank you so much uh, oh, for your pleasure. Uh, yes. Ramsey, Elizabeth, Janet, and, uh, uh, yes. and, and of course, Sel. So thank you so much for yes. sharing your story also. Yeah. Today was fun. It was a fun day. It was like really yeah. chill day. We were not doing anything, yeah. but still, still we covered a lot and it's still we ex get so much value out of it. So yes, it was equally yeah. Yeah. Uh, valuable uh, live today and uh, yeah really good, keen forward and looking forward to tomorrow yeah. oh sorry day after tomorrow sunday yeah. when we get into this so yes yeah. okay wonderful wonderful i love it i love it all right so okay. you know i started to do it and then i got distracted and i never started the grain you know. yes yeah yeah all right well tomorrow or well, sunday sunday yes. i'll do that all right, so so we're going to end now, and we'll catch you guys on Sunday. Remember, Sunday it is at two hours earlier than in the weekdays. So yes. Sunday is at eight a.m. Pacific uh, Standard Time, right? PST. All right, so all right, all right. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. You stay there, Bina. I'm just going to stop the live stream.